Aloha, this is Thomas Mobat. This is Recording Studio Forum. I thought I would get out of my studio today and show you Kuku Ao Studios in beautiful downtown Hilo, Hawaii. Bob Pratt is the proprietor. I'm going to chat with him for a bit and show you all around. Let's go inside. This is Bub Pratt. He's the owner of Kukuau Studio in mostly sunny downtown Hilo, Hawaii. Uh, could you uh, tell me a little bit about the about yourself, Bub, and the studio? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, my name is Bub Pratt. I'm the curator here at Kukuau Studio. We started this place up about eight years ago. This is uh, the third all-encompassing mural. Uh, we got a website, kukuaustudio.com. Yeah. You can go to all our links right and here. stuff. And uh, yeah, we got a YouTube page with, gosh, over 500 different videos on it. And wow. We're gonna... I, came, I came by here on Monday and it was jumping. The place was jumping. For the Jazz Jam. Yeah, tell me about the Jazz Jam and how that got started. Uh, it seems very popular locally uh, and you got a really good vibe going on. It was not an aggravated vibe. Tell me how you, how you thought, did you think of that up and how did that whole thing get started? I studied jazz in college and uh, always you know, hosted open mics and things like that and have always hosted jazz jams, different kinds of jams at um, home and out in different places. And so this was like the <clears throat> flagship event when we first opened. And so I did a bunch of marketing for it. Like, Craigslist ads and Facebook and stuff for musicians who want to, you know, be the nucleus for this weekly jazz jam that we're yep. going to start. And so we started back, started up like a little over eight years ago, and we just celebrated our 352nd jazz jam. Eight years of jazz jams every Monday. Minus like a year and a half for COVID. Yeah, yeah. COVID shut down the jazz jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've got a really good vibe going. You don't want to mess with that. Open mics can be tricky. I've, I've done them myself, and they're, they're not easy to run. They look like a no-brainer. And know, but, usually yeah. they lose money. And um, because, no, you know, you got a bunch of people who you're not, you can't pay really a cover for, a, you know, a bunch of amateur, you know, musicians to come up and play. And then at the same time, uh, so then a lot of people, like, will show up and just not, pay the cover and bring their own drinks and, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, I think the trick is to charge the musicians that come to play, you know, instead of, but then it's not an open mic. Yeah, know, and, so. then, and then, you know, fewer musicians show up and stuff too. So it's a weird balance. So what was happening before, we had an open mic going for a long time, but the jazz jam was going so great then that it kind of paid for a lot of the other, like just community events that, were, that, that weren't really holding their own weight. Yeah. So. But now the Jazz Jam isn't quite, since we started back up a little over a year ago, uh -huh. um, hasn't, we haven't really gotten back all the way up to what we were you know, before oh, really? March of 2020. So what I'm seeing is, is not capacity. Like you've been packed. I mean, you, yeah. yeah. It seemed pretty nice. I mean, the, the, oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's starting to get there. It's starting to get there. Good. Good. But um, yeah, we hold 180 people in here real, real comfy. Upstairs. And, and uh, yeah, between the dancers and all the musicians and... And everybody, yeah. So, yeah, there's this whole wraparound, you know, L-shaped mezzanine. Really cool. Really yeah. cool. So a lot of this stuff was repurposed. Everything, actually, was repurposed from some other thing. And so, I mean, I didn't ever, never took out, like, some big loan, you know, to get yeah. this place started. Just kind of started picking away at it. I brought my students over here from this music store that I was teaching at a few blocks away. And, um, you were giving lessons over there? Or something yeah, like I was teaching guitar over there and ukulele and stuff. Yeah. And then um, I, I had to leave that space. And so I found, and found this space with yeah. the, the grace of God. It's so great. It's, and it's just been great ever since, really. A lot of work. But um, I can see. it's the I can first see. time I've ever, um, after this place kind of got up and going, it's actually the first time I've ever kind of thrived instead of struggled to survive. So... That's a nice change well, up. It's That's from nice the fruits of your labor, man. All the all the time and late night hours with a paintbrush or a screwdriver, mm -hmm. hammer, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and the community really is has been appreciating it. So yeah. they've been supporting it. So it's been it's been great. Sometimes with open mics, you'll get like this 
when you first open up, people kind of rush to sign up and when they get the prime spots, like everyone wants that 7.30 shot. Do you yeah. ever get any kind of arguments about that or people fighting over slots? Or no, this, just... uh, this space just exudes, you know, aloha mm -hmm. and just a, a collaborative spirit. Yeah. so much that <clears throat> people tell me all the time they walk in the door they take like five steps and they're like oh i feel so comfortable here yeah. i feel like i can be my creative self so no, nobody it's kind of collaborative nobody's fighting each other to get yeah the, yeah, yeah. and everybody's cool. thinking about a bigger goal and it's rarely ever like me first and the gimme gimmies you know that's refreshing yeah that's really nice yeah, yeah so yeah, with the jazz jam, what we do, <clears throat> instead of calling, writing people's names in to keep it organized, we write in the songs that we want to do. And so okay, okay. each person who wants to call a tune can you know, call one or th one to three, maybe four tunes. And mm -hmm. they, we call the song, they get up and lead the song and then and, you know, pick the key and the feel mm -hmm. and stuff. And if it's one of the thousands of jazz standards that we have to choose from, uh, we just sit, we just go ahead and count it off and play it through. And most of the time it works out pretty good. Yeah, it seems to, yeah. It seems <laughs> sometimes, <fun>. sometimes <laughs> though, there's a little bit of a train wreck, especially if somebody's counting off who doesn't really know how to count off. Like this happened the other day, I this was, guy I saw that. counted off quarter notes and like, who counts off a jazz tune in quarter notes? I don't know. So I thought he was counting those quarter notes as two and four, and it was like a nice little clip. So you're, you're playing double time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But then it's like the melody wasn't working, and I'm like, whoa, wait a second. Oh, my bad. I should have clarified. It's because a lot of these guys are working on computers at home with the metronome click, and that I think that's the count instead of... Just a basic two, two, four count. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. something I teach too when I teach yeah. here. I teach, I teach the kids how to like get their band going. One, two, one, two. Everybody's on the same page. That's kind of important to get the thing rolling right. Otherwise, yeah, it's, right? it's a train wreck before it left the station. You know? Right, yeah, but, right. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's the, the, the train takes a little bit to get started, but it gets into a groove and stuff, and then we... Yeah. We have fun with it. Yeah. Do you ever get guys bringing in charts? Do you guys work with charts? Or you just, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. People will bring in charts, and if we don't have them in our, um, in our books, then, then we'll bring in charts. And, you know, sometimes we veer from jazz a little bit here and there, but, mm -hmm. but, as, long, but as long as they bring in a chart or it's kind of something everybody knows and we can, and we can improvise around it, that's, that's the... Um, that's the thing about that. Yeah, you're more of a band leader than you are an open mic host. I mean, you're really, you're really, you're yeah. calling out key changes and stuff, and yeah. telling people when they're off. And yeah, yeah. So you're you're filling more than one pair of shoes there. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. And I'm also, yeah, so yeah, I'm hosting the jazz jam. I'm also mm -hmm. playing in it, and I'm also helping make sure like all the chairs are rotating. You know, if there's another drummer comes in, make sure hey, let the drummer know hey, there's this other drummer. You guys work out when you want to do the switcheroonie. Pick which tune on the list you're going to do that on, yeah, yeah. and we'll take that time to let you guys do that. But, yeah. and that's what that's what it's about. It's about having the ro the rhythm section rotating, you know, different horn players and singers and people calling their different tunes. And if you don't know the tune or can't can't hang with it or whatever, you just sit out and wait for the next one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed pretty peaceful. People are, are not fighting to get on the oh, drum wow. kit. Or, I've know. been to jazz jams in big cities before, and it is like cutthroat, competitive. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you're a new guy there, you got to show up there yeah. a bunch to even get on the stage. You, you know, they don't. <clears throat> talking about New York or something? Seattle, yeah. Seattle whatever, you know? Yeah. And, um, and this is what I, I call this the most aloha jazz jam yeah. you'll ever, you'll ever. Yeah. You know, if you attend. could, if you could bottle that and sell it, man, you've got to. Yeah, gotta, I like the concept you guys have. You don't people don't sign up their names; they sign up a song, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the musicians just certain people, I guess, gravitate to that song. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. How do they, they let you know that they want to play? How do you how do you pick that? I mean, you've got different musicians in the audience that might want to get up there. Like like for example, do you have a, a house drummer? Does he step off and let other drummers yeah. hop up there? And yeah, exactly. That, yeah. And because I'm worrying about all these other things, like, you know, working, the, keeping things going, flowing, 
How's the bar doing? Yeah, you're running. Is the there any street? crazy people yeah. walking in? Right, right. <laughs> Do I have to put anybody in a half Nelson? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know. And, um, Frank, Sinatra, Frank Sinatra never did any of that stuff. Yeah, just, I don't yeah, know, you, man. You, that, yeah. I bet Frank Sinatra could throw a punch. He would probably be pretty good at yeah. running a business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Um, uh, luckily it's never really come to fisticuffs. So and then the house bass player kind of you know pays attention to other bass players and you know piano player same thing and if there's you know. We can have like a couple of guitar players up here, but if there's already two guys that want to play guitar, I'll sit out, you yeah. know, and I didn't make this stage for me to have a venue to play music because no one else <laughs> will hire me or whatever, you know what I mean? I play plenty of gigs. It's not the me stage. Yeah, you know yeah, That's exactly. great, man. that's great. So. I wanted to know if you're doing any other any other regular events. Uh, is the studio space here available for parties and private events? Oh uh, yeah. It, tell me, besides the open mic jazz, that's just on Mondays. That's just on Monday. Uh, tell me about the space and how people can get get that or how that. Would well, be. yeah, we rent out the space right now. So you know, only thirty three hundred fifty bucks to rent out the space. That's the base level. You know, if you need a projector, it's a little bit more. If you need a thin, you know, some other stuff. You have a projector and, one. and yeah, the whole thing. You have a, a screen or something. Yeah, like we have that? a couple yeah. of screens. We have like oh, a, really? cl a classroom screen, and we have this big uh, theater screen from the old Akibono Theater in Pahoa oh, cool. before it burnt down. That's really cool. If people wanted to book you for a private party or event, how would they get in touch with you? Uh, oh, they can, they can just email us studio at gmail .com. We also have a website. KukuaStudio.com, you know, you just type in K-U-K-U-S-T-U-D-I-O, and that's the only thing on the planet with those <laughs> two words put together. Actually, Kukuao, the word Kukuao is indigenous to this neighborhood, but I decided on the name of the street. Yeah, I saw that it was the name of the street. Yeah, that's it's the name it of the street, yeah. and it goes, she's like four or five miles up Malka. It does. Mm -hmm. This street goes way up there? Yeah, this street really? goes, weaves up there so in the neighborhoods old, and stuff. it's an old Hilo street. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so I found two definitions of this word, kukuau. One was um, thorny stump, <laughs> but I don't, I don't think that's... <laughs> although it, is, it could be apropos, I'm a little bit thorny. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and then two was the village in downtown Hilo where everyone has ponds in their yard. I'm like, ponds in their yards? Why do they have ponds in their yards? And, and then uh, I talked to this old uncle, and he says, oh, yeah, the, when, you, it, when you're at, living at sea level, you know, real close to sea level, you'd have a, you could have a hole, and it'd just fill up with water, with right? The tide. The tide and, would fill and, up. Um, yeah, and it pretty much stayed the same, right? And then okay. and it could, um, so you'd have these pond, your, your pond, and you'd have your fish in there, and you'd, you know, Fishing was was bad, you know. You needed something to eat. You just go in and grab one of those fishes, you know. Wow. And also, but it also doubled as a tsunami warning, because the tsunami would suck out all the water, right? And then and then they would have they'd hear the sound of the fish, fish flapping in the bottom of their empty pond. That would you wake know. them up. And they'd be like, whoa, yeah. That's <laughs> so, like a tsunami alert. Is yep. that, that's amazing. Yeah. Besides the jazz jam. Uh, you also operate a recording studio, and you, you give vocal and guitar lessons here as well? So yeah, the, the teaching thing was the first thing that happened here, and then... Um, you brought people from the other I brought, places? Yeah, I had about 15 or so students I brought over here, and they loved it. They loved watching it morph and and every week is like every week i come here and there's something new <laughs> and stuff like that they love like trying to point out the new thing and uh, they still do it's really fun your but, students yeah is that mainly guitar or voice or a combination of both or? i teach guitar i teach all the fretted instruments except for banjo uh -huh. you know some bass ukulele you know guitar um voice teach uh, songwriting, composition, improvisation. I had this uh, student who came, who was learning the serenge. You know what the serenge is? Is that African? It's a uh, serenge. No, it's uh, it's, a, it's a it's rhythm. Indian. No, I don't it's know what that Hindi is. It's a Hindi kind of bowed instrument, and it's kind of boxy, and and it sits on your lap. 
Don't like like this. Yeah. This lady, she wanted to learn how to play like blues and stuff on her serenade. I was like, <laughs> and she couldn't play a scale like in tune. Like, let's start with the basics, right? <laughs> I know. I'm like, I can't teach you this instrument. That's you have to learn how to yeah. play it in tune first and then come to me. And, she wanted um, to start up here. Yeah, of, and yeah. you know what? That happens a lot. Yeah. People, you know, just want to start running before they can even possibly walk. And so that's a hard conversation to have. You have to tell them, yeah, I know this is what you want to do, and I can help you get there, but this is what, but there's like 10 steps that need to happen before you can get up to there. So, you know, and most of the time they, they listen to me. You know, I've been, shucks, I've been teaching guitar now for over 20 years. Actually, last year, uh, Cuckoo Owl Studio won Music Instruction of the Year. Oh, congratulations. Award. That's yeah, great. thank you. Yeah, you started with the, the big room. The big this room. Was the, here. This was the uh, practice room and mm -hmm. teaching room. Mm -hmm. And performance, event space, and, and stuff. And the space here opened up. For and and when I moved that. in, like you couldn't walk upstairs without fear of falling through. What you could there? see through the floor. Was it a storage area or it something? It was just a yeah, storage area that just like practically rotted through. Like I said, I asked a really heavy friend of mine to walk, I was standing back here, and to walk across the <laughs> deal, I saw just like, do, 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 do every step, I was like, you, so you, went through the, you went through your phone list to see who's really big, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> big, who's my biggest friend? Yeah, right. <laughs> this, this guy named Banjo Youngblood, he's, he's pretty cool. Banjo, I'm, um, wait, Banjo Youngblood? Yeah. I love him already, man. Yeah, he's a good a big guy. big boy, a big boy. He's a good guy, yeah, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, so I reinforced all that stuff, and then, but there was this ukulele luthier that had this little room next door, and there's two front doors here okay right and and um and so when the luthier moved out my landlord gave me first dibs on oh. on getting that space oh nice of him and um i said yeah just give me a couple of days and so i knew kali'i kind mm -hmm. of we were we were acquainted before who's kali'i he's the house engineer oh, okay. okay and I knew it, we were kind of acquainted before, and I knew he was an engineer and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and we got along great. You know, every time we got together, it was like super good vibes, you yeah, know? Yeah. And That's important. Yeah, that's really the most important thing. Most yeah. important thing. You get along. Exactly. Yeah. I, said, I, showed, I set up a meeting with him, showed him the space. I'm like, dude, it's gonna cost this much. We'll just split it. Okay. And okay. Um, that's what you needed the time for to consult with him and see if exactly. he was into it. I'll and pay half of the extra amount of rent that that takes, and you pay the other half. So then Khalid was on board. We moved in and we started uh, doing that and, and slowly started to just market the recording aspect. And I didn't know this at the time. Really, I knew he was just an engineer. Yeah, how did you guys meet? I mean, did you met? Well, yeah, we had a mutual friend, uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and we'd met a few times just casually, and I knew he was an engineer. And um, so I asked him, said, I said, dude, I'm not going to move into this joint unless I have a partner. Yeah, you know? it's too, you don't, need, you don't an, need that much space. An engineer yeah. partner. Yeah. And, and we want to turn this into a recording studio aspect, like a control room, and mm -hmm. have be able to use both spaces. And he's like... I've been looking for a studio, recording studio space in downtown for like 10 years wow. and nothing's wow. really popped up and this feels like it, so let's do it. So I'm like, let's do it. So we Great. did it. Great. And um, How long ago was that? That was uh, about four years ago now. Oh man, yeah. he's in there working right now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, right, he's yeah. mastering Great. Um, Great. The, some... That's some nice, you have separate rooms, you can work, you can do your thing out here, you can do... Yeah, that's really exactly. nice. Exactly, yeah, Perfect. yeah. Perfect. He's it? right, there's not a lot of stuff in downtown Hilo. It's not like there's a big warehouse district or something like right. in some big cities where you can just lofts or cheap. But yeah, it's like there's nothing. You know? Yeah, there's like I've, I've never seen anything like what you have here. So Kali e and I, we we tag team that that yeah. control room like like crazy. So he, if he's not working on something, I'm usually working on something, and, and or we're working on something together. So you're getting, that your, you're getting your money's worth out of that uh, expansion. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, yeah, great, great. definitely yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah, dear brother, man, I, he's actually that that relationship to me feels like my most healthy relationship on the planet, you know, right now because he's just he's just so solid. And if he has a problem, he comes and tells me, I fix it. Nice. Do what he wants. If I have a problem, I tell him, he fix it. You know, we 
We just, yeah, it's no big deal. No one's getting butt hurt. No one's being weird. That's more weird. than a business partner. That's a friend, right? Yeah, there. yeah, he's a dear brother. Yeah, so that's great, man. So yeah, we and when we're working on a project together, it's super great. Like, because we have kind of, we have definitely different skill sets. I mean, he's he's like this master engineer, right? He's worked with Clive Davis. He's worked oh, wow. with uh, Brian McKnight. He's worked with you know Justin Timberlake. Lots of people you've. Yeah, heard of. all those. Yeah, those. yeah, and so his schedule used to be for like ten years. His schedule was in L.A. He was bouncing from, you know, this day I'm doing a twelve hour session yeah. at Sony Studio at a Studio Three in Sony. You know, this day I'm at um, Capitol for a sixteen hour session, and who knows how much I'll sleep. And there's a little bed, and everybody takes turns using that, and it's like living on a on a submarine or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, um, so that, he did that hard for like 10 years and so, and he'll probably tell you more about it, but it, it's not sustainable really for too many people, anybody really, and so he came here to do some healing and things. And So you guys work on separate projects and then sometimes together, jointly? And yeah, we work on separate projects, but it's about like a third, a third, a third. It's pretty even. And how long have you guys been doing that together since he moved in here? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Before this space was built, I mean, this space was originally built as a, a Hatata bakery in 1930-something, 30 whole building, this whole strip. Yeah, yeah these, whole, these two buildings, they're kind of yeah. joined. And, Hatata um, bakery. Hatata Old bakery. Old bakery. And um, yeah, Japanese family bakery. And uh, they were in business from like the 30s to the 70s. Mm -hmm. And so this was like the dough side. Wow. The next building over was like the baking ovens, ovens the size of Mack trucks, right. you know, shipping <laughs> containers. And then the other side was the packing. And so they kind of, wow. they'd bring in the flour and stuff on this side and do, do, do. now so it's you, bread being had, driven if, out the other side. If you had a job here, that was a good job. And it was like a, a good, yeah. a good gig. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It, it's, it seems like Hilo has such a history and also, not just a history, but an underbelly, kind of an unseen part of Hilo mm -hmm. that the tourist, tourism industry doesn't really focus on. They show you the Queen's Gardens and the waterfalls. But living here as long as, as I have, I've seen such an underbelly to it that's just ignored. And uh, tourists come here and they're like, they don't know what to do. They're like, what is this place? And it kind of defies their, their imagination. They go up to the volcano. You know, they have lunch at Ken's and go mm -hmm. up to the volcano. Right. But it, you've, you know, this, this place is kind of a... Got a lot of history to it, and yeah, you know, I, you're, I, you're kind of part of the underbelly, you know. I am the you underbelly. <laughs> I'm the I'm the nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> in I'll both ways, you can good. think yeah, of that. The nightmare. Do you ever do any kind of internships? Do you ever work with apprentices or anything like that? All and the time, all the time. Other Lots of mentoring. Okay, tell me you about know, that. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I'll have a student, you know, who who's doing the student thing, and you know, mm -hmm. paying me to teach them and then or, and then they'll but then they'll want to hang out and like listen and and while well, while they sweep or something or and everyone knows this is a safe space you know and so um you're talking mainly about musical apprenticeships now are you well no actually anything just creative in general because okay, okay they'll be they'll be shadowing when you know hey check you know help me storyboard this I see. Or, 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 hey, make the, uh, here's a flyer. I, I need you to make a flyer using this, this, and this, and this. Here's the picture, and here's the logo. Here's the QR arts code. Well. Here's the stuff. Uh -huh. Make it, make it look kind of like this, and this, and this. Uh -huh. And, and, and then we go, just go back and forth on drafts, just like I would, like, a graphic designer that'd be paying or something. Yeah. We, don't have a big budget here. No, you know we're not being. We don't have government grants. I call this place an unofficial nonprofit. We're just really a, a community space, yeah. and the community, um, you know, sports it and and in all the different ways they can. From like sometimes I get people who want to say, hey, I want to help. You know, plant some stuff back here or outside uh -huh. or or hey. Uh, do you have a spot I can put a mural on, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. or this uh, mural that you see here has a, gosh, a list of like at least a dozen people who worked on it. This piece is called uh, Village Vortex. 
because we are in the village here, uh -huh. and this is kind of, there's a mushroom village, and so we were kind of in this village vortex, and so the vortex was my idea, and the boom box was my idea, uh -huh. and uh, I like to make, when I'm doing like a mural project, I like to make like a, a super easy, like paint by numbers type thing, and just get a bunch of people involved, and so that's what I did with these, with these bits. Nice so. that you have a walk-in boombox over here. That kind of was a, yeah, did right. you think of that for the? the that was, that's the old walk-in freezer that came out about the end of the stage. Oh, it did. And the, you'd have to walk into the refrigerator to go into that. And that's why I think the handle is still in one piece. It's perfect. Because it's perfect. it was frozen for 40 years, you know? Oh, really? Okay. Right. So, and fortunately construction, like I said, is the family business. So I was able perfect. to do perfect. it all with a little help from my friends, yeah. you know? Uh, you mentioned to me, I think it was that Andy Warhol had a place here once, mm -hmm. and, and I, I've never heard that before. Was it Andy Warhol? Andy Warhol, yeah. That's... He had a little studio here in downtown, and he was uh, friends with this old guy. Well, he wasn't old then, but this old guy who rented an apartment in the same building. And he would come over here and talk story, and he started clubs and stuff like that. He was also a um, Pulitzer Prize winning photographer for National Geographic. Oh, not Geo. And um, uh, he died in his apartment over there a few years ago. The back. photographer. Yeah. Okay. But, um, so was he I got, working with Andy or with the, just friends? They were just friends. Okay. Yeah. And, and he, but I got a bunch of stuff from him from his apartment oh, that wow. my landlord was gonna throw away. He didn't really have any next to kin or anything like that. Yeah, so yeah. he had, I guess he had a huge stack of um, art magazines. And I remember him telling me, hey, do you want this stack of art magazines? I'm like, no, man, I can't really do anything with that. And he was like, okay, well, I'll do something with it. So he, I guess he, he made a bunch of collages out of the art magazines and put them on this foam board. And they were hidden, they were stacked up behind his little sofa up there and my landlord gave me those and I put those all up on the wall and with single wall construction you want to cover that stuff up as much as you can yep. but then he also gave me this box of um, over here? original on that wall yeah yeah upstairs, yeah, upstairs yeah. yeah and so he um, also gave me this tote he had this tote of um, like original pho photographs that he had like all this art stuff, maybe like some commercial stuff he'd worked on and things like that. Uh -huh. And in this tote was a <clears throat> was just a matted um, uh, eight and a half by eleven photo of Andy Warhol sitting on the steps at his studio in this place by the armory down there. Wow, downtown. what was he what was he doing here? I mean, that, that, he it was his little getaway studio. He's like Mr. New York guy. Yeah, you know, he, I, didn't, I didn't know he ever left New York. Yeah, oh, I guess so. I guess he did because he was. He was, um, he had, yeah, a little studio. It's probably a big studio. It's probably, probably the dance studio. I think it kind of looked like oh, that really? space. Over was he there. doing business here or just vacationing here to get out and get away from the big city? Well, I don't think Andy Warhol ever really stopped like working. Yeah, you know, he's like one of those guys. Yeah. You know, I'm not 100 percent sure, but no, so he I just wanted a new change of scenery and had a little studio space here that he would come to and. And when he wanted to get away from the city, I think is how the story went. And in Little Hilo, who knew? I know Hilo. that's not in any documentary I've ever heard. Of. I've, I've have, watched a lot about Andy Warhol, but never heard about him going to Hawaii. I He's so this, pale skinned; he doesn't think like he'd go out in the sun or right. He had these big glasses on, or drink a mai tai, or anything like he's that. He's wearing like jeans and like a right. jean jacket and like a light turtleneck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he never left the Greenwich Village. Italian yeah, shoes, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, um, so cool. but so uh, this is an original photo uh, that this guy took. Oh, His man. name was uh, Thomas Sabo was his art name. That he was, art, yeah. he was a graphic designer okay. and okay. a photographer. Right, I got for, you. And got you. So he did like a lot of their like marketing campaigns and things like I that. I get it, that makes sense. So, Is that still a picture that you have access, you still have that? I have that, I yeah, I'm hanging that, on to that. Yeah. I would, I'd, love to, I'd love to sell it. I think it could, it, yeah, it could be. An original photo of Andy Warhol at his, on the steps of his studio in Hilo. Any advice to new producers or engineers that wanted to open up their own studio? Anything that 
you'd like to maybe offer as advice to them or anything that you wanted to talk about with that? There's a lot of guys coming into a very strange new music business and it's changed a lot. I was wondering if you had any words of wisdom on that or... First thing is when you're first starting, do as much as you can just for free. Mm -hmm. Like find artist, go to an open mic and find an artist that maybe they haven't recorded before or something. So you're all like learning together right. and say, hey, I want to just, can I record your favorite song for you completely for free? I'll do my best work on it. And, and if you like it, great. If you don't, you didn't lose anything except for a little bit of time. That would be like the first thing. Second, of course, is to, gosh, you just got to know the crap out of whatever your DAW is. Yeah. And your DAW being like the platform that you use to record. Um, all the shortcuts. Work on making your workflow as efficient as possible so you can get the maximum amount of done. Amount done mm -hmm. Because you can only have your ears fresh for so long. And so if you're like having to listen to it too much before making the decisions that you need to make, you're going to be uh, draining your ears and you have to come back to the project again, wherein if, you have, if you're really efficient, your ears last the same amount of time, but you um, get a lot more done that way. So. Yeah. yeah. I've been working on that. That's a funny thing. I, I asked that same question to Klee. Uh -huh. I said, Klee, man. You know, we've been at it for about a year or two. I'm like, bro, is there anything you can think of that I can do better in the studio as like, you know, with what we're doing? Are you offering we, advice from him? To I'm me, asking for you. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm asking him, what can I do better? Uh -huh. You know, what can I improve on? Uh -huh. What'd he say? And he said, uh, I don't know, bub. Man. Let, me, let me think about it. So a few days go by. And he says, bub. Remember that question you asked me about what you could do better in the studio? I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, what, what's your answer? He's like, you could be a better engineer. <laughs> like, <laughs> ouch, ouch, and thank you. Yes. May I have another, please, sir? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> May I have another, please, sir? Yes, so I really worked on being a better engineer. I'm a much better be engineer than so I was. So your musicality was strong. Coming yeah. from strings and voice and jazz and you need yeah, to, you need to brush up your studio chops a little exactly, bit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, well, I can see why you like it out in this nice, big, airy, well ventilated room as opposed to a dark, you know, cave like studio. That's where right. I spend most uh, of my time is in a cave. And I'm more yeah. of a social type person. Yeah, you are. So, a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. There, are, I, there is a window. You guys cut a window so you get a little bit of daylight. Yeah, there. we yeah. made that. You know, Kali'i found that two pieces of glass that were the same size at the uh -huh. restore. And, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And I d designed the frame and we made that. We framed it. and Perfect. You got to have a studio window if you call, call yourself a studio. It's like, otherwise you're just, uh, what are you? Without, without the glass, you're, you're not a quite control a, room. You're a control room. <laughs> But that's what we call it anyway. That's the control room. We do most of our recording in there, um, single tracking. Uh, if we do drums, we'll do them either in there. Sometimes we do them out here. Most times if we do live drums, we're usually plugging in the electric drum set so that we have control over it in post with the MIDI. We've done a handful of live records here too with uh, uh, a band. We'll come in, we'll get them all sounding really good, and we'll set up, have it set up with as an event and have a live studio audience, and it's, and it's super fun. And I'll just go up at first and say, hey, guys, thanks for coming out. We're doing this. As you know, this is a live recording, so make a bunch of racket between songs, oh, but man. if you could try not to make a bunch of racket during the song, right. it'd be super great. It's you know, nice that you kind have of control over that. You've got your own little television studio here, basically, with we a could, live studio audience. You know Exactly. So, yeah. We could do that. So That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. I've designed this place to be really malleable, mm -hmm. to just be able to... Uh, just be able to push everything around and make it a totally different vibe depending on what it needs to be. We can take those couches and bring them up to the stage and make mm -hmm. it a super intimate vibe like if we're doing these a, guys, these tables. If we're doing a poetry slam, for example. Yeah, yeah. Or the open mic because there's not going to be a lot of dancing. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, we've done 
all kinds. Of, we've done TED Talks type things. We called them the Science Cafe, where I worked with a, a um, scientist at the university who's also kind of like a <clears throat> the science department marketing person. Uh -huh. And you know, she put together these TED Talk things, wow. and they were packed. Really? It was stinking beautiful, and really? I like I, I learned so much. You so know, mostly just, university people, or you know, d d yeah, different university wow. people, telescope people, uh, different crowd. It'll be like three, four, five different um, disciplines. Yeah. is the word. Yeah, um, re you know, represented in one night, like like from talking about like the new, latest stuff we are seeing in space, and then the next guy is talking about. Um, how the Cokies got here <laughs> and what their different calls mean wow. and how to like how to like hmm. you know <laughs> battle them and 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 keep them off your property and things like yeah. that and the things yeah. they hate and and uh, it's just every bit of it was just so fascinating. There's some super smart people in Hilo. That's what I've learned. Yeah, yeah there's major yeah mathematicians mm -hmm. and scientists and things mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. who who know things at levels that are hard to imagine would be even interesting <laughs> to me, but, but I'm not that kind of, I'm not wired that way. It, I'm it, it, wired to make art. It, it seems like you're getting a really diverse group of people using this space. Uh, yeah. That must present, what were some of the more challenging situations you've, you've come across? I'm also looking for advice that you have, people that can avoid uh, maybe pitfalls or situations that you've had difficulty with, with such a diverse group of, of people coming through this space. Mm -hmm. Does well, any particular instance stick out as like, oh, that was a hard night or? Oh yeah, yeah. a lot, <laughs> many. <laughs> a lot. But um, uh, the, the ones that w didn't get off the ground even though mm -hmm. were the ones that maybe were a great idea, but th um, they weren't really implementable. Like mm -hmm. there, they, there was just not like a big a market for that great idea. And so it's not going to, you know, re the studio isn't going to get reimbursed for the time that the studio needs to yeah, be sure. able to pull that off, for example. Yeah. Or I, I try to keep this, I want, I always keep this place like family, mm -hmm. you know, oriented. Mm -hmm. So like we never, we've never done like a burlesque show. Yeah or anything about nudity or the closest thing to like any kind of risque was uh, um, for a long time we had a weekly uh, the Hilo artist Hui was here mm -hmm. every week and they would have you know a uh, live model drawing often they were nude and it's a classic format yeah you know yeah. That, it's pretty and, tasteful yeah. yeah and people you know yeah. I mean they were always and I I've worked in lots of different studios where they did that too yeah. like like more, but more art studios. A lot of people are gonna see this space and maybe think about opening up some kind of a space, probably not in Hilo, but someplace mm -hmm. in another city that they might wanna open up something like this. Any advice that you could give to people that like what you've done and wanna kind of do their own thing with a similar idea in their hometown? Yeah, well, yeah. you can't do it without some kind of team, okay? And you need a really, and if, your team isn't like big and and versatile. Mm -hmm. You need to be big and versatile. Yeah. You know, you need to be able to have a lot of different skill sets. I was super blessed um, growing up with my dad being a residential designer and a contractor that I would, he had always had a home office. Yeah. You know, he was always self-employed yeah. and I could, and I would be like, I don't know, in the living room having a sandwich or something while I'm listening to him having meetings with his clients, mm -hmm. you know, and at sometimes, home. At home. Yeah. yeah, and so these meetings would be, would be mostly him gently telling them what they can afford to do, uh -huh. and them wanting to do all this stuff, but him having to scale it down to them because this is, this is the budget, and yeah. If what you want to do is going to like increase the budget, you know. If you don't have the money, don't you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So lesson so, learned being don't think outside of your finances. Exactly. That, you know, that was that was well. That was just one example yeah. of it, you yeah. know, or or them thinking like, you know, they want to do something, you know, change, make changes last minute, and it's like it's already up. It's going to cost, you know, just ne uh, negotiating, you know, with the client, and then. Um, Although my mom was mostly a bus driver, a school bus driver growing up, she was always an artist. 
and we always did art projects and stuff. And um, she was also, she was a florist. I would go in and help her at the flower shop once in a while, you know, especially when I was like suspended from school for fighting or something. <laughs> and <laughs> I'd, work, I'd work at the flower shop with her for a Maybe buck an hour. Maybe some flowers will calm him down. Yeah, right? well, yeah. I was <laughs> making arrangements and right, stuff yeah, yeah. and um, learning that. And But she was also a, a wedding coordinator. Oh, right. So basically right, like right. an event planner. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so I was helping her always with these weddings. She would like get the caterer, get the cake, get the band or uh -huh. the DJ, uh, secure the location, do all this stuff, get the, you know, get the, get the dial it, everything in with the church and, uh, you know, all this, all these boxes lot, lot need to, to be yeah, checked to, to, yeah, to have an event go smoothly. And, and she, she made it look so easy and I was constantly helping their drag and being drug around and um, I didn't really know it at the time that that um, I was going to be using that skill set that I was just learning just through osmosis and so the combination between the you know project management with my dad and then event coordinating perfect and then and then me going to school and studying music uh-huh and being a performer. Not to mention the construction skills. And yeah, the, you know, the construction stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so all those things kind of kind of play together. But right now, since we're kind of out of the past the construction phase, it's mostly the uh, event coordinating, project management, and um, and the the uh, music bits, live yeah. performance yeah. bits. Just knowing how a stage works, knowing what a what a what a um, a, a technical writer. You know, mm -hmm. looks mm -hmm. like, and yeah. and be able to follow that up, yeah. and if you don't have three people doing that, then you need to be able to do <clears throat> two of those or yeah. all all of them or something. That yeah. would be my advice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Learn every aspect of, of get some help. What it is Get you want to do, and the parts you don't want to do, you got to find somebody to yeah. do them. I can kind of be a graphic designer, but I'm not really a graphic designer, so I always. Yeah. I have a handful of graphic designers yeah. that I use. Bring them in, yeah. Or um, interns, figure out how to work with their skill sets, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like my last intern that I was telling you about, like I was trying to get her to mop and sweep. She she can't. She just is cannot mop. I tried to show her. <laughs> she wouldn't do it. I try, you know, I'm like, okay. It's not okay, a wheelhouse. Okay, yeah. I can, uh, you know, I can, can watch her mop this all, take all day to mop, mop and sweep. Or I can do it real quick while I get her on like, um, you know, making a computer. little 20 second video yeah, yeah. for a commercial, you know, okay, yeah. okay I'm gonna utilize her skills that way, yeah. you know. You know, I could, I'll be, I could be the janitor, the door guy, the mm -hmm. sound man, yep. the bartender, yep. the, um, you know, stage hand. The MC. The MC even, yeah, yeah. yeah. and be, you know, you know, you producing every, the yeah. recording of it or you something. You kick everybody out at nine. Yeah, it's closed at nine. I kind of like that, that it, it wasn't, it's not a late night place where oh, nothing nice happens after midnight. And I've worked in a lot of bars where it gets ugly. Yeah. And it's nice that, you, you know, don't, people don't have to go home, but it kind of calms down at 9 p.m. I yeah. like that. I like, and I'm, I'm out of here by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it's, it's much better to just ease out than to last mm -hmm. call. Everybody's on the streets intoxicated. And that's I, where stuff gets ugly. You right. Know? When like, I first moved yeah. here, I moved into this spot. Um, I kind of fought it a little bit. I wanted to go till 10, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But sure. Then I realized yeah. one, the, the neighborhood doesn't like that. No. And two, it wound up being actually a blessing. Nine is nice. So, nice. So, yeah. yeah, I can, yeah. I can, you can play a game of chess. I can play a game of chess yeah. and, and, and be, yeah, and, we, and be home mm -hmm. by, Mm -hmm. You know, 10, 10, 30. That's been a blessing because I, I look at some of my friends that own clubs and they they get old looking fast Yeah. You know, for yeah. a lot of different reasons. There's chemical reasons, but there's also a mm -hmm. sleep reason. And I'm trying my best to get as much sleep as possible, yeah. but I suck at that. Go, studio. Oh, wait, sorry. You're not here where I can see you. Yeah. That's, yeah, back, 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 kind of right in there. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> that, you know I'm focused on him, so that's safe, 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 safe. You didn't have to do it soft. Do it nice and loud. Loud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any advice uh, to, um, let me ask you this way. It's interesting times for the music industry. Um, do you see new artists making any mistakes, uh, uh, you know, trying to break into the industry, musical artists? And is there any advice that you'd like 
to give them? Well, one of the mistakes I see them make is that they don't <clears throat> take the time to really learn their instrument or, or really like study. They don't take the time to, you know, have mentors. They think they can just do everything themselves. Secondly, another thing I see is that <clears throat> they, uh, they don't fully understand or appreciate how much work it takes for these people to be where they're at. Yeah. That is an intense, insane amount of work. You know how much Taylor Swift works? Dude, that, you know, you know how much, you know, all those people were constantly working. And as a hyper creative, that's what you have to be doing. You can't be, you know, lollygagging around. I mean, yeah, a couple hours at the beach because you need a break or something, but you need to get back to work. Yeah. And, and that's why I tell people here, this place is not a hangout. Right. You know, if you're going to be hanging out here, I'm going to put a broom in your hand or you're going to get put to work somehow. Right. We're or not come, come by on Monday night and enjoy yourself. But when we're working, we're working. Exactly. Yeah. When yeah. we're working, we're working. And, and we, of course, there's always time to, you know, relax. But mm -hmm. you, you get done and you get back to work. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, a lot of these people think it's going to be it's a really easy little thing because all they see is what's on the surface. You know, but it's like their song is going to get discovered and they're just going to be <clears throat> plucked yeah. out, plucked out like the, the crane machine and dropped into stardom. <laughs> you know, right, <laughs> it's right. like, no, no, the crane, no. Doesn't, there's no crane. And no, no, <laughs> no. It's yeah. You have to be that stuffed animal in the crane machine <laughs> that like drags yourself out you from all the, the other stuffed animals and <laughs> claw your way into the little into hole. Into the chute, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, a, that's how it is. And, um, and how you do that, I mean, one of, the one, one of the big ways you do that is by, of course, being really proficient, doing a lot of, being able to do a first take, being able to, and knowing what you want, um, being able to take constructive criticism and following through with that. Um, Constantly honing your craft and getting better and, and never being stagnant. Um, listening to other artists, being aware of what's happening at the time, you know, what's what's popular right now. Yep. Where could this popular project uh, trajectory be going? Mm -hmm. Maybe I can meet it there, mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? There, there's, there's lots of introspection, lots of, you know, self being critical of yourself and and you know and lots of editing uh, oh, uh there's not one sound or one um one bit that comes in the studio that you hear in any record that isn't just massaged and juiced and every all the sweetness is extracted from it and um you'll never you'll never uh because it's all editing, yeah. and you'll never hear anything that isn't hyper-edited. Um, what new plans do you have for the future of the studio and anything that you're excited about coming up? Well, I'm working with a couple of different event production companies, mm -hmm. and they use Kukua Studio all the time for their like mid-size you know, level event you know, type uh -huh. thing that, you know, that maybe lo like small, like intimate ones, I guess would be more like it because there's, there's a, you know, thousand person venues and there's like three, 400 person venues. And then there's like this 180 person venue here. Yeah. here. So oh, this is nice. This there's is that, and then, you know, the, there's always room for improvement and this place mm -hmm. gets, uh, gets used and, and abused, you know, more yeah. traffic all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And like there's this back area over there, mm -hmm. we kind of call the smoking area. It used uh -huh. to be the acoustic stage, but it kind of gets weathered and stuff. So it's- Yeah, it's, it's outdoors. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of outdoors, at undercover. And yeah, it's, and Plus, do you need there's two holes stages? in the roof. Yeah. And do you need two stages going on at the same time? Too? No, it wouldn't be the yeah. same time. Okay. I, okay. We, I, had a, I had built that spot because uh, we were doing a, a big like all day event. Actually, I think mm -hmm. it was the, the fourth birthday party for the for the studio and so while and i had a, like three or four different bands playing but then while the bands were swapping out and setting up i used the other stage as an acoustic stage and so people could 
could just bang on their like a solo singer songwriter could bang mm -hmm. on their guitar, not need a microphone or yeah, just an acoustic space. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that was nice, and then, so there's something going on there while we're doing the transition here, and then we do this thing here, mm -hmm. and then, yeah. No, it's perfect. I, I appreciate this space. There's so few places to go, and not just in Hilo, but probably in most cities. It's either a bar or it's a restaurant, and you're going to go spend money on food and beverage, but there's so few spaces to go anymore where you can just hang out, whether you're spending a lot of money or not. You can go there with little or no money and, and chill out. <clears throat> uh, kind of a third space to go to. So I appreciate what you built here. And I, I can see by the people coming in the door, they, they appreciate it too. I think if you had a much bigger space, you'd lose some of the intimacy. I think 180 is perfect. Well, you know? um, there's a couple of spaces I'm actually looking at mm -hmm. that would be really great. And I would recreate this intimacy mm -hmm. in those spaces. I could build, I would, you know, let's say you got a, uh, let's say a, f a four thousand square foot. Okay. You know, okay. big space. And let's say, mm -hmm. and let's say the stage is thirty feet wide. A bigger stage. Yeah. 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 You know, and like maybe um, fifteen, eighteen feet deep. I would still go ahead and and build that mezzanine mm -hmm. thing, kind mm -hmm. of wrapping around it a little yeah. bit in a yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And then I'd and then I'd have I'd set up all these little, you know, nooks and bits and yeah. and the details. And yeah. yeah, the design stuff mm -hmm. is really mm -hmm. I love doing that. Oh man, and it makes it it makes it just gosh, so nice. Gosh, and if yeah. I had a if I had a, like a righteous budget, I could just make that stuff just well, ah. there's, there's money out there, Bob. You just got to tap into it. So, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Well, so thank, thank you for getting this started. You, you took it. You took it to this level. So With maybe, maybe nothing. Somebody, maybe somebody else is going to come along and get the idea and say, "Yeah, let's let's uh, make this more of a Hawaiian thing, a statewide thing, or even a national thing." Yeah. You, yeah. You so there's it. all kinds of ideas like that yeah. floating around, but <clears throat> really, we're just really trying to take it one day at yeah. a time, and yeah. you know, keep the calendar, keep the calendar, you know, foolish and yeah. um, <laughs> foolish, <laughs> not full, <laughs> foolish. Little, you know, that's yeah. realistic. That's really and realistic. you know, yeah. have a life kind of. Yeah. But I, plus, yeah. you're teaching kids that when I came in to set up, you had lessons going on, and mm -hmm. her mom was waiting, and her brother's waiting for mm -hmm. her sister to play her guitar lesson. And it was like, mm -hmm. that's really thank you, man. Thank you for yeah. creating this here. And it's it's definitely something that Hila's needed for a while. I don't, I don't think there's ever been a place like this. Before, yeah, you, so. you know, and I, and you touch on something right there too, like. <clears throat> um, something I I discovered in college where and a mentor told me this. He said, yeah, it's, it's really weird when you, you know, we were talking about this trumpet player in the mm -hmm. band mm -hmm. and such a crazy, intuitive, like amazing trumpet player, right? Like he had a gift and, and my mentor could play trumpet and stuff too. And he's like, it's so crazy to watch him because he's making notes that are not the fingering for those notes. <laughs> you oh, know what I mean? Yeah. He's stuff's coming out that does not. Really? Jive with the fingering. Nobody knows and, that except another trumpet player. Exactly. It's three, it's three valves. I would I mean, never right. know. I would yeah. never know. Yeah. Yeah. And he, um, he's like, th this guy, you didn't even know, this guy has, is the, it could be the best trumpet player, you know, one of the best trumpet players ever, but it comes too easy to him. Oh, yeah. And so, and now this guy, the same guy, you know, I jam with him once in a while when I'm on the mainland, but, um, He's an art teacher in high school, high school wow. art teacher. Wow. And same is true like with, with, my, um, with my teaching. I've always been a teacher and it's just one of those things that just kind of innately comes to me. And I, I think I tend to put it kind of a little bit more on the back burner because it comes so innately, you know, it's like so easy. And I, want, I thought of hit my, my mentor's analogy with me in that regard mm -hmm. so yeah. so yeah teaching just comes easy i love it but um you know i always there every you know every five ten five years or so i need to take a nice long break from it so <laughs> yeah thank you bub for your time i appreciate your appreciate your time and tell me all about this place it's happily yeah, thanks for yeah, your thank interest you. in kukuwa studio and yeah. and yeah kukuwa loves you <laughs> thank you man <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.